So let's see what this uh, what this uh, um, tells us about about image formation by these devices. Let's start with the converging lens. So what we have first of all, we draw the optical axis. Every lens has an optical axis. It's the axis of symmetry of the lens, basically. And let's draw a lens here. So we have that parallel light rays, light rays that are coming in parallel to the optical axis. Like that one. This one. And this one. They're all sent to one point. So let's say that the focal length of this is, let's say, here. That's the focal point. Oh, you already know that. And so these light rays, when they go through the lens, this one is sent that way. And this one is sent this way. So the same thing will happen if you were sending light rays from the opposite direction. They will be focused on the other side at the same distance, right? So let me do that Very carefully here, 40. So here's the other focal point. So actually I could have continued this. What I'm trying to show you is that this very simple behavior, which is parallel light rays converge at one point. That very simple property of a converging lens in this case tells you that this device is going to be able to form an image of an object. It's going to be able to form an image of an object. So this light ray, if it was coming that way, it would be sent this way. This light ray, if it was coming from the right, it will be sent this way. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Let's say that you have an object somewhere here. So as you know, Objects emit light in uh, all directions. Every part of the object is shooting out photons in all directions. So the tip, for example, of the object is gonna be sending photons that way, that way, that way, every possible, in every possible direction, right? The one that is going horizontal, parallel to the optical axis of this uh, lens. What's gonna happen to this green light ray? It's gonna hit the lens, and it's going to be sent this way. It just continues to move in that direction. Now what's going to happen to the light ray that was sent that is going towards the focal point on this side? passes the focal point, is going to hit the lens at some point, here. What's going to happen to that light ray? In which direction should I send it? On the other side of the lens. 
This way? Should it hit the focal point on the other side? How about there? How about there? How about there? Sounds, sounds all right? How do we know that? How do we know that that light ray is going to do that? All I said was, if you send light rays that are parallel, they all go toward the focal point. This guy is not parallel to the optical axis. How do I know that it's going to behave that way? The answer is, light is reversible. The trajectory that a light ray follows in one direction is the same as the trajectory that it follows in the opposite direction. So if the light ray had been coming from the right, it would be parallel to the optical axis and it would be sent towards the focal point. So a light ray that is sent on this side through the focal point must uh, become uh, parallel to the optical axis on the other side. Okay? So the same one property, parallel light rays go to the focal point tell you that this light ray goes this way, behaves in that way, and that this light ray behaves that way. All right? There's one more light ray that it's easy to figure out what it does. It's the light ray that goes from that point on the object through the midpoint of the lens. Somewhere like that. more or less, they would intersect at one point if I had done this correctly. So the point where they intersect, I'm going to change that a little bit just to cheat. The point where they intersect on this side is very special point, right? What makes it special? Notice that at this point, that the light coming from one point of the object, coming from one point of the object, has been sent to one point on the other side. There is this mapping, this one-to-one -one correspondence that I was talking about some classes ago, about when you're trying to make an image of an object, say that you're trying to project the image of this thing, suppose that this is a, a, a um, yeah, whatever object you have here, and you're trying to make a picture of that object. What you want to do is have a film somewhere to receive the photons and create a record of that. But every location of the film, on the film, for each location on the film, there has to be a correspondence with one point on the object. Right? A lens, a converging lens, is doing exactly that job. Establishing, it's sending the light coming from one point on the object, sending it to a particular point in space. Right? So if you were to put a film here, uh, what, hap what is true for this point will be true for this point, right? So you can do the same parallel light ray, the one through the middle, the one through the focal point, and they will converge to this point. And the image of that object would look like this. Now what kind of image is that? We mentioned that there's two kinds of images that you can have. One is virtual, the other one is a real image. The virtual one was formed by the projection of the light rays, right? That by the uh, sort of the mental of the way uh, we process image that we assume that light rays that are coming, uh, diverging in a specific direction, there have been or originated from a common point, right? but there weren't any photons behind the mirror, right? In this case, if you put a device here, like a camera, a film, or a CCD device, those are pretty real photons, 
and they heat the camera and they're going to produce uh, in a film will produce chemical changes in the film. Those are, like I say, real photons, real light rays that are being intersected. For an observer over here, all you're seeing are light rays that are diverging from this point. Okay, so if you're looking at this, you would see one uh, image of the object here and that would be it. Unless you were at an angle where you can catch some of these light rays and some of the light rays that don't touch the lens. But if the lens is right in front of you, this is where the object, object seems to be located. Okay? Seems to be closer to you and it seems to be inverted in this case. So uh, take note of what these, those three light rays look like for a converging lens. Because you, are gonna, you will be asked to figure out the location of the image of an object using a converging lens. And sometimes you will do a calculation. As you know, there's an equation. I'll show you that equation in a minute. Uh, but you can also do it by tracing. Uh, by tracing. And the light rays that you want to use are these three, as I said. These are called the principal light rays. One that goes parallel goes to the focal point. The one that goes through the middle is unaffected. And the one that goes through this uh, focal point on this side uh, becomes parallel to the optical axis. Now, the one that goes through the middle, I haven't explained to you why nothing happens to that one. Does any of you know why that one was unaffected? magnify the middle of the lens. That's what it looks like. Right? So a light ray that is coming in at an angle and it hits the middle section of the lens, there is no... Uh, the, the, uh, the orientation of these two surfaces is the same, they're parallel. Correct? So you would have some sort of uh, deflection here a little bit. right? But since you are going back to this medium, this is air, let's say, this is glass, and this is air one more time, guess what angle you're going to make? If this was alpha, guess what angle that is? It's going to be alpha again. What should be coming to mind is the example that I gave you with the different layers, and you have N1 and an angle theta 1, and propagates through all these different layers. At the end, right, a layer 6, you have N6 sine of theta 6 should be equal to N1 sine of theta 1. If N6, the last layer, happened to be the same material that you had on top, if N6 is equal to N1, then theta 6 is going to be equal to theta 1. So actually, no matter how many layers you had put here, if they are pa parallel and you're going from air back to air, the angle will be the same. So that tells you that that light ray is, the direction is unaffected. There is a small shift in the location of the light ray, right? There's a little shift here. But uh, we ignore that by saying that all the lenses that we're using in this class are going to be thin, not very wide, that you could have some sort of distance there that is significant, but if they're thin, the distance, the de deflection, or not the deflection, the shifting of the light ray is very minimal. So I'm not going to bother with that, and I'm just going to draw this light ray going through the center as if nothing happened to it. All right? So those are the three principal light rays for that case. So the same thing for, I'm not going to do all the details that I did before, but uh, it's good for a diverging lens. Those are the two focal points. And let's say that you have an object somewhere here. Where would the image of that object be formed? So let's do again a green arrow here. Yes. 
And let's think about what happens to the light rays coming out of the tip of it. By the way, in that, in that drawing before, we only located the tip, but we assumed that everything else was, this, uh, you know, at a corresponding location. We only located the tip of the arrow, and we figure it's here, and uh, we are assuming that the tail of the arrow is imaged here. You might want to take a look at that and see if, if you understand why that should be. So uh, the light rays, as I said, are shooting out in all directions. There's an infinite number of them. But you pick three of them because they're easy to, tr to track. Okay? So let's look at what would happen to the one that is going parallel to the optical axis. We know that a diverging lens sends the light rays diverging away from the optical axis and they diverge in such a way that they seem to be coming from the focal point. So I'm going to do, do a dotted line here to indicate the projection of that light ray. It is not a solid line because there is no actual photons that are following this part of the trajectory. Okay? So that one's, uh, that, that one's easy. Okay, what else? The easiest one of them all is the one that goes through the center. Because you don't have to do anything to that one. So if it goes through the center, it just keeps going. And all you need is two light rays to locate the image, right? If you have three, it's good to draw the three of them because if you made a mistake with one of them, then drawing the third one will tell you they will not intersect at the same point. So that would be a good, good practice. What would be the third one that I can do here? Yep. And how do we know that that one works like that? That's right. We would know for sure that if it was coming this way, right, parallel to the optical axis, it would be deflected this way and it would continue, or the projection would cross the focal point on this side, right? We do not, we do know that for sure. So if it does that, traveling from right to left, going from left to right, it's got to do the same thing. Right? So notice that if I uh, continue this, so it's going that way, it's coming in this way. So if I continue it, the three of them intersect or seem to intersect at this point. That's for an observer that is looking at this whole situation on this side. Okay, because that observer sees a light ray coming in this direction, right? So the image sh should be somewhere along this line. The observer also sees a light ray coming from that direction. So assumes that the object, there should be an image or an object located along that line, right? An observer with a big eye will catch this light ray also and continue it and see and think that that's the location of the object, okay? So uh, I'm not going to draw, I'm going to erase this one so it doesn't look so confusing to you. Okay, because the two that we are projecting are this one and this one that way and that one that way. Okay, so notice that you got here an image just as you did with a converging lens, but this is not a real image. It is a virtual image because there is no physical convergence of the light rays at that point. 
right? This is a point that only has the projections coming to crossing this point. There is only one light ray that actually passes that point, but that's not enough to call it a real image. A, lim a real image is formed by the convergence at one point of an infinite number of light rays physically crossing at that point. Okay? Again, this is only three of the light rays that are coming out of the object. You have an infinite number of them. All of the light rays in between these three are going somewhere, you know, between here, right? And when you could uh, project them, they all cross at that point. The important, uh, or what I'm, the important point that I'm trying to make there is that sometimes you will find this very common. Sometimes one of the light rays it just doesn't fit in the picture. Right? If I had drawn this object pretty close to the focal point, for example, then you would have um, a light ray that comes parallel from the other side and hits the focal point, would be very steep and it would not hit the lens. So you'd be like, oh, there's no image on the other side. Wrong. The fact that you cannot draw one of the uh, principal light rays is no uh, reason to assume that there is no image on the other side. Okay? Because these are only three, and there is an infinite number of them that would make it through the lens. 